What's up guys and gals and welcome back to the Nerd Castle. Today in the world of indie games, we're going to check back in on The Last Haven. This is a game we looked at in early access about seven months ago. And it's a game about building a city in a post-apocalyptic environment with frequent incursions from zombies and monsters and things of that nature. You've got a customizable army where they all have different armor and different guns and things like that. Sort of an RTS where you can equip each of your individual soldiers to do their own thing while at the same time borrowing from RimWorld and other colony management games by forcing you to chop down trees, beat down stones, and all that kind of fun stuff in order to get the resource returns that you're going to need in order to move up to the next part of the tech tree. So, with that little synopsis aside, let's dive on into the game. I think we're going to have a good time today. We're going to see what things have changed, what things have gotten better, what things have gotten worse, and whether or not it's worth adding to your wish list at this point. New game! Uh, we'll put everything just on the default, since that's probably what most people are going to do when they dive on into the game, and I want this to be as representative as possible. Alright, so here we are. We've been dropped in the middle of our territory, and it wants us to go ahead and make a warehouse first. That's going to kind of be like the, the central fixture of our entire society. What I would recommend you do is actually assign all these guys to the one key right at the beginning, or split them in half and do a one key and a two key so you can kind of command them around individually. Either way, you're going to need a way to separate the wheat from the chaff. You want to get your soldiers separated from all of your little villagers. These little guys right here are actually not even selectable. Like, they just kind of do their own thing freely as you build buildings and design tasks. So anyways, let's look at the UI. Now we've got 250 wood, we've got 75 stone, we've got ourselves 100 metal, 50 polymers, we've got about 250 coal for burning, we've got 75 fuel right there, ethanol or gasoline, who knows, I'm sure it's super flammable and fun. Uh, we've got electronics over here, we have 100 cans of corn or something. We have 23 guys that are looking super stern, and then we have six of something that doesn't pop up, so I'm assuming those aren't implemented yet, maybe. Uh, they look like like women or like ladies or like, I'm not really super sure what they're supposed to be, but there's no tooltip when you mouse over them, so I assume that maybe they don't come into play just yet. It might be unemployed women is what it comes down to, because it says they're unemployed down here. So maybe that's what it is. I I'm not super sure. I was fiddling around with it before we started playing here today, and I wasn't quite positive. The center of our city and the place where we are going to keep all of our stuff, uh, we're going to have a... Yeah, let's go ahead and we'll put a warehouse in... Let's say right there. That sounds good. We can rotate things around just the way that you would assume you would by using the, the middle mouse wheel. Uh, the next thing up that it thinks we should build is going to be a sawmill, and I actually kind of agree with that. Uh, I think the sawmill is probably a really, really good idea. So, we'll put in a sawmill right there. It's going to block our line of sight a little bit. It's going to cause some problems, but we're going to be building walls around other places anyways. So, let's not panic too much about it. The final thing that it wants us to build here is a greenhouse. This is going to help us out with our food situation, which actually is fairly... The food situation can actually be a little bit intense in this game. Uh, so make sure you build two of them. That's my recommendation, as I like to build two. We're also going to take these soldiers, and we're going to scout around a little bit before enemies start flooding on into our city and causing problems. I will say this about this game. For what it is, the game has a really, really, really cool set of sound effects and, like, gunshot effects and everything else. Like, the sound design of this game is actually pretty good. Like, it's got the normal, it's got the normal affirmations and stuff that you would get from troops normally. But, like, once you get into combat, you'll see what I mean. There's some polymers, and there's some fuel inside of there. For whatever reason, these guys don't collect it. You just, like, click on it, and, and you automatically have it added to your stuff. What's going on over here? Little event. You can collect items and resources, explore the area. Oh, it's just letting me know. This game does have randomized events, in case you were wondering if you're a fan of that in RimWorld. And you're like, alright, well, where are the storms? Where's the nuclear fallout? Uh, there will be things that happen. There's some wood right there. What else we got going on? Looks like we have... I don't think there's a key that I can hold down to highlight anything that might be around. Hey, there's an MP5 with a silencer right there. I'll definitely pick that up, so we'll grab that real quick. I, I basically just mouse over everything until I see something flash at me. If there is a key that I can hold down in order to see the items that are like laying on the ground, that'd be super cool, but I haven't found it yet. I tried tab, alt, control, all the, all the, all the standard you know, suspects that you would think would be that, but nope. Uh, it's possible that they want it to remain hidden and they want you to kind of like dig around an mp5k Okay, that's a little shorted like piss. That's a little shorty pistol grip version of the mp5 They're not gonna equip any of the guns that we have until so one of the things oh, I Thought I heard gunshots for a second. I was like mm. anyways You'll see these little guys have their own equipment. He's got a USB 
Uh, this guy right here has a Colt 1911. One thing you can say about games being developed in other places where I honestly don't know. Like, I don't know exactly how the copyrights work. Like, I read somewhere that you actually have to get permission from arms manufacturers and pay a licensing fee in order to have their guns and the images thereof inside of your game. And, and so anyways, I assume this is all licensed out good and fresh. But anyways, it's cool to have, like, real guns inside of a game. I've gotten very, very used to not seeing real guns in games. It's usually, like, kind of like knockoff ideas, I guess, like it'll be named like a USK instead of a USP, you know what I mean? It'll be named like an M45 or something like that instead of an MP5. Just the way that it seems to go with gaming. There's some fuel right there, some wood right there, polymers right there. No guns, unfortunately. Last time I played through here, I got like a couple AK-47s, I got a Galil, I got a whole bunch of goodies when I played through here, like on my practice playthrough. I usually, what I've started doing now is because I do like one video a day, what I've started doing is I'll do like an hour of playtesting before I record a game normally on like the weekends and kind of get ready for the week. And I'm telling you, man, we got a rough run going right now. There we go, an MP7, take that. MP7's a cool ass gun. I don't know if you guys ever played Escape from Tarkov. Escape from Tarkov, the MP7 is by far one of my favorite guns in the entire game. Thing's a freaking laser beam, man. It's disgusting. A little bit more wood around here. I don't see anything else laying around out back. So I don't think that there is anything. We've made it to the street on this side, which is kind of crazy. Is that ammo right there? Oh, it is. It's bullets. Nice. Uh, is all my stuff built? Good. So what you'll see is we've got our sawmill, and four people are working inside of there. We've got our warehouse. Nobody works inside of there. It's just like an, a central repository where they're going to drop off all the stuff. Now that our warehouse and our sawmill are built, more specifically our warehouse, what you'll find is that my soldiers will start to equip the guns that we've been finding on the ground. They'll just do that automatically if it's an upgrade. So that guy's got a Mac 10 which is pretty badass. Or maybe they didn't. Yeah, throw on like an MP7 or something. MP7? No? No MP7? I don't know. They'll equip it as some- oh, there's food too? What? I didn't even know you could collect those little mushrooms off the ground, man. I just learned new things. Apparently we can use our soldiers to collect mushrooms off the ground. Aw, yes. All right, so let's go back. Now, we have a number of people. Well, a resource station is probably a good idea. So if you're wondering what a resource station does, a resource station basically just grabs stuff off the ground. It's basically a salvaging station. So as you can see, when I put this down, it's illuminating mushrooms, it's illuminating berries, it's illuminating chairs, it's illuminating cars. Basically, anything that can be broken down will be broken down by this thing, up to and including cars, vehicles, houses, you know, all that kind of stuff. So, we'll get one of those going. I think only two people work there, so it shouldn't be that big of a deal. Hey, there's our boy with the MP5 right there. I think they must have gotten separated at some... They definitely did. They all got separated at some point. Yeah, there's all of our MP5s and stuff. Alright, so let's cut down this way. We'll have a look around with our soldiers. Pretty soon, we're going to have to fall back to town, and we're going to need to, like, defend that point. For right now, it's not super important, because we're still on day one. But trust me, once we get to, like, day two, day three, in there... We'll definitely need to have a couple of guys just like staying back at base and shooting down any of the zombies or any of the monsters that come around in order to try to bury us. Uh, I think we've mostly cleared all of the fog of war. It, I see power cables up there, so I'm going to send them up that way. I see power lines, so maybe there'd be something up that way that we can get our hands on. All right, so with our greenhouses, with our warehouses and our sawmills, it's almost nighttime. we got construction going over there. I think we should probably make a laboratory, a place where we can do some research. Where's the front of this building? One little UI thing that I would recommend is I definitely think uh, when it comes to the UI, what they should do is it should have a little green arrow that tells you which, dire which direction the building is facing. It's fairly obvious in this game because you can find the doors and you can find like the front gates or you can find like the front of the sawmill or whatever. But even so, I would say there's just one of those little UI things that I expect from most games nowadays is there should be an indicator area arrow that tells you the, the face of the building that you're attempting to place even if the facing doesn't matter like some people are just OCD about it and I do include myself among that number I'm one of those people that I like all my buildings to kind of be lined up right I like them to be facing the same direction I don't make messy bases some people make messy bases when they play stuff like Command and Conquer or whatever I'm not really one of them not really one of them who are these guys what's going on over here also where are my soldatins at okay my soldatins are up here Let's cut them over to the right. Let's see if we can get anything cool. If 
figured out in this area. We'll just follow the power lines for a minute. We're almost out of resources anyway, so it's not really going to be that big of a deal that we set up any further buildings. I think we're going to kind of just be like eking out a living. Uh, the refiner, I'm sorry, not the refiner, the laboratory though is really, really cool. That'll be helpful. We can actually get started on some useful things to help our city out. We may have to go in a little bit deeper on food too. What was that? Uh, we've got refugees. We can bring them on in. We do need more workers, so I'm going to bring in the refugees. It is indeed under attack. Let's bring the soldiers back. I know. I saw them. When it was panning over to do that event, I saw those like irradiated boars or whatever they were. I don't see it attacking anything right now. I would recommend maybe doing like a little mini-map since they're playing around with somebody's disease. That's not good. Is it one of the people that came in that's diseased? Is that what it is? Hopefully the soldiers get back quickly. Yeah, there they are right there. We got a couple of animals headed on in. Let's go ahead and set up a firing line over here. We're going to get all of our soldiers into position. So that they can just be ready for whatever decides to come. Uh, we don't really know what's going to happen here. Oh, there's a building that I missed over here. With a deagle inside of it. A deagle and some ammo. Alright, well if anybody wants to bring down the big brucka, you can. I'm in, I'm in the camp that thinks that the deagle is a totally pointless gun that has no function whatsoever. Like, it's just a useless firearm. No matter what you would use it for, there's another firearm that would do better at the same job. You guys get them? Like, listen to those gun sounds. Don't they sound pretty good? Like, I like the gun sounds. Like, they sort of surprised me. Like, I started playing this game and kind of testing around. And, and, like, when I heard the gunshots for the first time, I was like, oof. That's a that's a that's a spicy gunshot sound right there. Uh, we can get the factory one, which lets us make small arms, ammunition, body armor, and other necessary things. It's kind of cool. Uh, we've got the science tree, the survival tree, the industry tree, and the politics tree. We can get a one-time increase in stability. Let's. Yeah, let's go with that right there because I see like food tends to be my problem in this game. And so, like, if I can get my food kind of squared away, I'd prefer to do so. Uh, this sawmill right here is doing the best that it can. Unfortunately, it's coming in kind of slowly. We're not really pulling in that much lumber. It will tell you, I think, your daily totals of, like, what's been added to the stockpile as they run it back, if I remember correctly. I feel like I just saw little wood guys run it over here, so this guy's sick. I don't know how we fix a sick person. We probably just send them out into the wilderness and shoot them or something. I don't know. Uh, we are going to need a rock crusher. That's going to be kind of important. Looks like there's a big old pile of rock like over here. That does take them kind of far away from the warehouse though. And I would like for them to be a little bit closer to the warehouse. So we'll drop it right there. We have enough wood to get it done. I'm thinking maybe a second sawmill might not be the worst idea either. Uh, we'll put them on wood. They should be on wood already just by default. But just in case they weren't. Uh, it does look like we got a plus five right there, so that's good. Yeah, like half you guys go over here. Like half you guys kind of just patrol around here and do your thing. Just sort of sit around and relax. It's going to be zombies. There's going to be all kinds of stuff trying to file on in. Super glad. Exactly. Exactly. See what I mean? You see what I mean? Just zombies everywhere, just causing problems. Finally got them, though, so that's nice. Uh, these guys, they do have a command that allows you to reload them. They do have commands that allow you to go prone. They do have commands that allow you to change their fire mode. Uh, it's up to you what you want to go with. Uh, I assume that that has varying effects on accuracy. Uh, I would like to see those varying effects be sort of like... Everybody go single mode, please. I would like for those firing modes to, like... It looks like, actually, it does... From what I can see right here, it looks like the firing modes increase accuracy. They were not hitting shots. Yeah, they're hitting shots much more frequently. Okay, we'll hit them on. We'll leave them on single fire then, because you never know. They are going through a lot of ammunition, and we were really only picking up like, eh, we were only really picking up like a hundred bullets at a time from any of these buildings or whatever. So I don't know if I actually effectively searched this place. I kind of want to take a soldier up there and look, but we're under attack right now, so maybe I'll leave it alone. One thing I do like, the last time we played this game, I think we did like a longer episode, and we still had not done any combat. So I'm glad that they decided to push some combat to the forefront with the game, because like I think that's important for drawing people into the experience and kind of getting them immersed, is that you'd like to see... 
you know, a little bit of combat, like in the early game. It's sort of like RimWorld, throw the, it'll throw that one raider with a knife at you within the first 20 minutes or so, just to be like, hey, combat's a part of the game, you gotta learn to do it. Got him already. Wasted him. Feeling pretty good about our perimeter right now. And my dudes are not, like, super scattered. So I think we'll be alright. Hey, ammunition. It's easy to miss those little ammo boxes. That's kind of why I recommend you go through and you kind of look for them. Whole bunch of wood inside of there. There might be something around the back or something elsewhere inside that building that we just can't see for now because of the fog of war. Uh, we've got the partial fog of war right now just to, like, obscure movement or whatever. But I, I don't think I'm going to, like, we've got enough combat happening over here to where I really don't want to move people around too much. One thing I do like is take a look at the bullet holes right there. Uh, if they could get these bullet holes individualized by the surface that they're hitting. So, like, some of these would be, for, for example, like, this is a concrete wall right here, so those bullet holes fit right in. That's obviously, like, concrete that's had holes blasted in it. But with the earth right here, if you take a look at it... It'd be cool if they got that to match up with kind of like overthrown dirt and divots that are knocked loose from the bullets. The little details. A resident has spoke of a polymer dump two kilometers away. Yeah, we'll send some people out for resources. It's going to take these people, I hate to tell you, but it's going to take these people from your working places. And so you're going to have to go back through and reassign them. Uh, it doesn't grab them from your unemployed like you might hope. Alright, so our next thing is we got combat training. So that'll give us access to the barracks so that we can make more soldiers. Uh, we can increase the production of our wood by quite a lot. I think that's a good idea. Our food is dropping pretty rapidly too, so the other idea is we can increase the amount of uh, caloric value that we're getting out of individual foodstuffs. Really just kind of depends what you want to go after. I'll go with food, I think. We'll go with food for right now. We'll go with a little bit of oodles of foodles for the moment and see if that helps out. Uh, I don't know exactly where it tells you how many bullets you have, except for when you go to the warehouse. Looks like we have about 75, 7,700 rounds, though. So I don't think we're going to have to worry too much about bullets for the moment. I was kind of like a little bit conflicted about whether or not I wanted to go after like arms training and arms manufacturing. But seeing how much ammo we have, I think we're good. Uh, and I think that food is probably the principal worry. Like, we can kind of solve our wood problems by just, like, waiting a little bit longer and not being that concerned about it. Like, we don't die if we run out of wood. However, we do very much die if we run out of food. So, like, if we can get a little bit more caloric value so that people maybe only have to eat every couple days, that'd be preferred. Nice. Got that guy right there. Perfect. I love those tracers that they give you, too. They've got such a satisfying amount of impact. Like, one thing I think this game has done really, really well, regardless of what you may think about the other aspects, is just, like, the thickness of the tracers, the impact of the hit and the zombies being knocked back, the blood splashes, the chunks being knocked out of the concrete. Like, I think they did a really, really good job with the weapons and the combat. They sound really, really rad. I like the way that they do. Uh, we'll go ahead and speed up time for a minute here. I don't think we have a whole lot to face off with anyways. One of our people has been infected. It's not super great. I would assume that we would prefer that people not become zombies. That's more than likely something we would probably try to avoid. Luckily, he turned into a zombie right in the middle of all of our guys. Did you see the glass fly when they were firing through the greenhouse? Cool stuff, man. It's little details with this game that make me think it's really going to turn into something special. Like, that's, I mean, like 90% of my job is just looking for little details in a game. That's it. Like, little graphical details, little sound details, little textural details. Like, because that's the sort of stuff that to me sells that a developer cares. And that, like, they want the game to be good. Is if they took the time to make sure that the gunshots sound beefy. That the chunks being knocked out of walls. That the bullets going through buildings knock wood to the side if the building is wood. They knock glass to the side if they're actually glass. Like, stuff like that shows attention to detail and attention to character. And, and it's usually a very, very good sign. We have 75 wood right now. Most of our people are homeless. That's kind of a bummer. I don't love that my people are homeless. Unfortunately, we don't really have access to anything other than shanties. Uh, so, we may want to wait until we can build houses first, although I would assume that's going to be down the civics tree. Uh, let me speed up the game for a minute here. we got 26 hours left on this bad boy. Where is housing at, out of curiosity? It's right there. So it's about three chunks down. I wonder if the research goes faster if we have multiple research stations. Another run of boars at us. Unfortunately, the boars are not edible. 
one would hope that we could get some sweet ass piggy meat off of them, but it don't work like that. We got refugees. One of our people, oh, our people returned from the task and didn't find anything. Okay. Well, at least they're back and ready to go back to work. I mean, that's a plus. I honestly, I think like a sawmill might be a really good idea right about now. I don't feel like we're bringing in enough wood to really consistently build. So I'm going to put in another sawmill. And let's speed the game on up. I do like the feel of the game. It kind of reminds me of Spell Force in some weird way. Like, it's almost like a modern military Spell Force, almost. Like, it's a real-time strategy game, but at the same time, there's little, like, kind of colony builder aspects to it. And there's little, like, level ups and things that your characters get. Kind of cool. One of our people looks sick. How do we handle the situation? Maybe he has a cold. Eh, we'll let him find out. I mean, the last zombie didn't really seem to be that large of a threat anyways. We basically just gunned him down instantly the second he turned. All right, our research is done. That's what we were waiting on. So our food should go a little bit further. Uh, we can also get a winter greenhouse project right there, which is pretty cool. Uh, I think we should kind of go towards houses, though. That's sort of what I'm leaning towards. So we'll go with construction one. Heating stoves will allow us to go ahead and upgrade buildings. But I think we'll probably go for this house right here. I'm not in the market of building like a million shanties. Like, I don't know. We could do it. Like, I, I assume that it would help us recover our stability if everybody has a house. Like, maybe it starts regenerating or something. But for the moment, I'm not totally sold on it. Now, the enemies always seem to come from the southwest. So, like, I'm not really going to worry too much about having soldiers all over the place. Like, I think just having, you know, a couple people holding the line will be just fine. Now we should start to see wood come in. Ah, we got an event. One of our people looks sick. Ah, we'll ignore it. He'll be fine. Everybody's going to be okay. It hasn't jumped up over here with the little medical symbol yet to tell us, like the little red cross, to be like, hey, there's actually a problem. So I'm going to assume that there's not actually a problem and that we're okay. Uh, from the resource station, what are you guys gathering right now? You guys are gathering fuel. Go ahead and gather food to help out with our food situation because our food is dropping off pretty quickly. And if it stays dropping off like that, I've got a really bad feeling. Like, I don't want to use... I don't want to use the last of my workers making another greenhouse, but I think we might have to. Food's dropping off pretty damn sharply. It's pretty ugly out here. Uh, I should probably look around for some mushrooms or something, too. All right, so the mushroom hunt, not going so great. Not going so great. But I did reassign our scavengers from the resource station, so we should have four more people bringing in food right now. That'll be fine. It looks like, actually, they've kind of picked through everything else. There's one circuit board out there. I'm assuming the electronics are important for making, like, automated defenses or something. Of which, if we were able to make that, I'd probably just put a turret right here for right now. I'll more than likely reappropriate that chunk of wall in order to make our own wall that attaches to buildings, basically, so nothing can get through. This side's a big dead zone, which kind of bums me out, but we'll figure it out. Uh, the mushroom hunt went terribly, though. There are no mushrooms around. I mean, there are. You can see them right here, but these are not the clickable ones. The ones you can have are like the brown ones, the little brown circular ones. And I don't know exactly where those are at right now, so eh. I don't know if they're morals or what they're supposed to be, but we don't have them. Not in this colony, anyways. Uh, good. Our research was successful. Let's take this down to the next level. We're going to go for heating level one so that we can start building houses, uh, which to me is probably like one of the biggest goals we could set out to do. There you go. I'm, I'm assuming. Oh, this guy leveled up. Look at you over here. Look at you over here being all. His name is Axel Sanders. Uh, that is the coolest action movie name that I have ever heard in my life. I can virtually assure you that if my name was Axel Sanders, I would be way more successful than I am right now. All right. Like, my life has been kind of like, eh, it's like a C plus. Like, I'm happy. I'm okay with it. But that's because I'm not really like a reacher. You know what I mean? I'm not one of those people that's like trying to climb the mountain and like, you know, secure unsecured territory. Like, I'm not that guy. And so, like, I'm happy with, like, the C-plus, you know what I mean? Like, I feel like C-plus is all right. You know, that's about what I did in high school. I'm good with it. But if my name was Axel Sanders, man, dude, I'd definitely be playing like, I'd be, if my name was Axel Sanders, you basically have to be successful by default. It's just too cool of a name. Axel Sanders sounds like the guy that rappels down a rope from a helicopter while, like, you know, spraying bullets at the enemies of your people. 
shirtless. Like, you ever see the, the cover of the original Wolfenstein 3D box? That guy. Like, BJ Blaschkowitz. You know, it's the same kind of name. Axel Sanders, BJ Blaschkowitz, Wolfenstein 9, you know, like... Ooh, another event. Is it just another sick person? Uh, there's a small group of survivors near our camp. Yeah, send some people out, for sure. Absolutely send some people out. Our food production appears to be kind of recovering, so that's really, really good. All it took was a completely new warehouse. That's all that it took. Uh, I'm gonna take some people off the sawmill over here and put them on food. It feels important to me right now. It feels important. Uh, the research times are pretty slow, so be aware of that. It's gonna take you a minute to get the research done. I haven't tested yet whether or not uh, having more labs helps out because labs are pretty resource intensive in order to make. Uh, you, gotta, you gotta have a lot of stuff to make a lab. But for right now, as long as we can keep our food somewhat positive, I'll be okay. I just, I didn't like where our food ended up over there, okay? Our food was down to like 20 and I was like, oh, I barely even noticed that. That's super not good. Another one. He looks sick. I swear to God, like every eight seconds, it says that somebody looks sick. I can't decide. I can't decide if we just live on top of like a bacterial colony, or if everybody that lives in this colony is just a hypochondriac. The second they see somebody walk with a limp, they're like, "Hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on." I think Daryl might be a zombie. I'm like, "No, no, I feel fine. It's just the sniffles." I don't know. I heard a zombie sniffle once. It's going pretty good right now. I feel like we've got a pretty solid start rocking. I mean, we are harvesting food from a lot of different buildings. Let's play around with some steel. We're almost out of metal. So we'll play around with some metal for right now so that maybe we can get to the next set of buildings. Could do a shack right now. I just don't see the point, though. It's so expensive, and it doesn't even work once winter gets here. Like, I feel like we should just save resources for when we get to house one. It's just my thinking. And it looks like the hospital right here is what's going to let us get rid of diseases. But anyways, this is the last haven. Uh, I'm pretty impressed with how the game is coming along. Obviously, it's a simple little city building RTS with some randomized events thrown on in. But that being said, like, you know, they're still working on it. and still having stuff added to it. Oh, no, he's infected. That's no good. Don't be infected. Oh, you got fatter when you got infected too. Uh, boys, we kind of have a we kind of have a we kind of have a zombie problem over here. I'm gonna I'm gonna strongly recommend. Uh, kill him. Oh, they have to go in through the door. That's kind of cool. It's rotated wrong. It's kind of a bummer. I wish that it wasn't rotated wrong. I wish that I had time to fix that, but eh. Kind of is what it is. This is the last save, and if you enjoyed it, my name is Splattercat. I sift through the pile of what's worthwhile in the world of indie games every single day, periodically. With early access content, I like to go back through and kind of check on it every six months or so. Uh, keep a list that's like abundantly long. It's absurdly long. My backlog is disgusting. But anyways, if you enjoyed the video, leave a like on it. Let me know what you thought down below. You can also check out my Discord if you wanted to engage with the community a little more closely. I pop in there three, four times a day just to say hello to people and then uh, field questions. You can also check out my Twitch stream where you can do it live, which is even better because then you got me captive. Uh, I'll see you next time. Thank you for being here. Take care, everybody. And that's all I got.